I'm back. I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I just spent 10 days in New York City. And here we're going to do Aloha United We Stand because it's Thursday and because we have with us Cynthia DeRoger, who is the founder and a board member of Surfrider Spirit Sessions. I am so curious. I was reading this on the plane on the way back. I'm trying yeah. to figure out exactly what you did and why. Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Hi, thanks for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah. I'm glad you made it back safe from New York. Yeah, so. well, you, you know, you fly on a plane these days, you never know. Yeah. So, you know <laughs> good for United. They did a good job. Yeah. Um, so you asked me what uh, Surfrider Spirit Session does. Yeah. Right? Well, what we do is we work with kids in the juvenile justice system or under supervision of the courts or in counseling, kids that are having lots of drama and trauma in their lives. and maybe aren't always making the best choices. And we match them up with mentors and we take them surfing. But really we use surfing as a hook to engage them in a positive community yeah. and, and learn really good life skills to wind up to become you know, really productive and healthy human beings. Does it work? It totally works. Yeah. Scarily enough, it absolutely works and it makes perfect sense in Hawaii. And you mix in Hawaii culture, Hawaiian culture yes. in that too. How do you do that? Well, surfing is from surfing Hawaii. Is Hawaiian and surfing culture. is Hawaiian it's true. culture. That's where it started. Yeah, that's where it we started. We should be very proud of that. Yeah. I am. I'm proud of so much of Hawaii. But you know, the thing about surfing that's interesting is everything in Hawaiian culture has a purpose, right? You have a canoe so that you can travel. You have a canoe so that you can go fishing, right? You have a house to protect you from the elements. Why do we surf? What's the point to surfing? And the real truth is that the whole purpose for surfing is to feed your spirit is to keep your mana strong, right? Is to build you up and to maintain that connection to the environment. I mean, these days, our kids are like in their little computers and they're texting each other and they have no real connections, that, that meaningful connection. Yeah. So part of what surfing does is it invigorates the spirit. It yeah. makes them feel good. It gives yeah. them a great sense of confidence. Um, and it connects them to the environment because no matter what, the environment is always there, right? Yeah, yeah you know, um you don't know this, but I'm I'm a kite flyer. Are you really? You just kind. Of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love to fly kites. That's great. And when I learned how to fly kites, which mm -hmm. was late in life, yeah. I realized what it was about kite flying that I liked so much that, you know, that made me want to go and do it over and over again. And and it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. As you want to be in touch with the environment, mm -hmm. you, the, with the forces of nature, yes. the powers of nature. Yes. You want to touch those powers. You want to have those powers touch you. Mm -hmm. You want to engage with them. Uh, you want to be at one with right. them. You know? right. And when you do kite flying, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. when, when I pull and the force pulls me back, yeah. I'm actually engaging with that force. Yeah. I'm part of it. Yeah. Um, it's all very s supernatural, yes. super mm, yes. spiritual, if you yeah. will. It is, it yeah, is. It's the same thing. Yeah. And it's a dance with nature, right? Yeah, a dance with nature, One yeah. of the things we always tell kids is that you can't always control the circumstances. You can't always control what happens to you. A lot of our kids come from really horrible backgrounds. And it's not necessarily that there's dysfunction in the family. Sometimes there is. Sometimes it's just poverty. Sometimes it's just bad luck, you know? Everybody died and now a kid has no family. Um, so These are mostly Hawaiian kids. Mostly Hawaiian kids. We're starting to see a rise in um, Micronesian kids, yeah. you know, some Samoan kids. But, you know, we've got Haole kids. We've got Hapa kids. we got, you got, yeah. you, na you name what it, we got it. what neighborhoods are we talking about? <clears throat> All over, but mostly uh, more poverty, right? So Which it would could be, be Kalihi, it could be Waianae, it could yeah. be Wahiawa. Yeah. Um, mostly Eva, you know, the areas where there's a bit more hardship. So how do you connect up with them? Word of mouth? Actually, most of them get sent to us through the courts. Oh, how interesting. Because yeah. they have some criminal problem. They, they have, well, criminal problems, you know. Or a domestic problem. They could yeah. have domestic problems. They could have learning problems. We also get them from counselors. We get them from other uh, youth partner service agencies like um, Keikama Pono Safe House for Boys. Um, you were saying something about, uh, we were talking about delinquency. A, a lot of times people refer to many of our kids as delinquents. And the one thing I want people to understand is that many kids who are under supervision of the courts um, are not necessarily criminals, right? They're what we call status offenders. So a status offender is something, is, is someone, a child does something that gets them in trouble, that if they were an adult, 
they would not be in trouble for. So for example, you skip school, mm -hmm. right? If you and I as adults don't go to school, nobody comes after us. If a kid doesn't go to school, they get put into the system, right? Because they need supervision. It's not the kid's fault. But a lot of times, if a kid is running away from home, you got to wonder, what are they running away from? Because if uh, everything is happy and safe there, why would they leave? I, I want to spend time with you <laughs> yeah. on root causes. You yeah. Know? But I also, want to, I also want to tell you about my movie experience. Oh, OK. Yeah. My, my movie experience on the plane, you yeah. know, now they got on United Airlines, they have, uh, they have 30, 40, 50 movies, yeah. you know, and so if you're one of those movie guys who yeah. doesn't like to watch a bad one, but does like to watch a good one, mm -hmm. you know, you're like me, you know, you flip through them and you see yeah. what you like, and yeah. some of them are wonderful. Yeah. But um, this is sort of an example of the American movie culture, mm -hmm. if you will. There's so many movies there. Mm -hmm. And it's not dissimilar from what you find at home on cable. Or, right. you know, or right, right. It's all these movies about the American daily life, the American mm -hmm. condition. And you know what, Cynthia? What? It's all about bad behavior. Oh. Every movie is about bad behavior. Yeah. Sometimes silly behavior, yeah. sometimes stupid behavior, yeah. sometimes juvenile delinquent behavior, mm -hmm. sometimes around downright violent criminal behavior. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. all about bad behavior. And in a funny left-handed way, seeing all those movies and knowing that the country in general is watching all these movies, there yeah. is a thought that flies through your mind, and that is that we're teaching kids we teaching them, about right? bad behavior. Right. And right. we're also teaching them that, that they're impervious, right. that bullets won't stop them, that yeah. a good doctor will fix them up no matter who chopped off their head, yeah, um, yeah. all that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm thinking on the plane, I'm thinking now, you know, gee whiz, we got to get at the root cause of this. And one of the root causes is people don't, they don't realize that when you give when you give the country art like this, and I call it art, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, generously, mm -hmm. um, you're teaching them, and, and you're maybe teaching yeah. them the wrong thing. I, I, don't, I don't know that that's the cause, but I do believe that it, it reinforces something, right? So if they're yeah. seeing that at home or they're seeing shades of that at home, now this is reinforcing it. The problem with a lot of our kids is that they just don't know any other way, right? They, they live in a world that's very different from most of us, right? So, for example, we had a kid who, um, family's really poor. Dad was in jail. Mom was bipolar, schizophrenic, wasn't taking her medication. That's serious. Nineteen people living in the house. Nobody has a job no for whatever reason, right? Yeah, yeah. So this kid, that is his world. That's like, his world. He broke out of that by getting a job. And half of his family said, why are you getting a job? You can just stay home. Right? Yeah. Now that's dysfunction in the family, but sometimes like it's, it's societal it's, dysfunction right. too that the family can exist that way and feel right. it's okay. Well, yeah, and, and I don't want to say that all of our kids have that example, but you know, on the flip side, we had a kid who his father died and then his mother died, and so he went to go live with his grandfather who died, and then he went to go live with his grandmother who died. He could get a complex then, after a while. You know, by the time he was 11, he had this internal clock that every two years somebody was going to die, so he started somebody running away. Somebody close to him. Yeah. And that somehow it was his fault. Yeah. Ooh. And he didn't make, he didn't realize that till he got older, right? Yeah. But, but, so there's all kinds of traumas and dramas that happen to kids that if they don't have the right support network to show them, hey, this is unusual, this is a drama, this is a trauma, this is real, but not everything in life is like that. If you can show them that there is joy, and if you can show them there is stability, and that's what we do, right? You take them out surfing, and the conditions are crazy and wild, but then they catch that one ride, and it's like, oh, wow. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And they come every Saturday, and there's their mentor. That, that Who's adult. Who's their mentor? So what we do Does is... Does the mentor have <clears throat> to be able to surf? Yes. Yes, but not always, because we actually have some people that we've taught to surf so that they can become oh, mentors. Oh, no kidding. And that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're so passionate about wanting to help the kids that they will come and learn to yeah. surf so that they can be a surf mentor. Okay, so suppose yeah. um, for one reason or another, I'm on your doorstep. Yeah. I said, Cynthia, you know, they, they told me your program was yeah. pretty good. And maybe if I got out of the house yeah. and spent a little time with you, yeah. I'd be a happier camper. Yeah. So what, what can you do for me? Tell, tell me how the program works for me. For you? For me. Well, the first thing is I'd say, come on over right now. I'm going to go get you an application. Okay. Um, so the process is actually that, that um, we'd have you fill out an application. We'd get you background check. Make sure that everything's okay. What's that mean? Uh, well, what that means is that you know you're not a sex uh, sex offender, or you're a predator, and that you know you're you're not gonna be putting you got boys kids and girls at risk. In this program. We have boys and you girls. You gotta be concerned about that. Yeah, now. yeah. So the boys surf with the the men, and the girls surf with the the women. Um, but then we have an orientation and a training, and then we run sessions, and you are there about as surfing. A, yeah, we run a surf How session. How old do I have to be? I mean, if oh, I'm, if minimum I'm really young, minimum is like 24, 25. 
yeah, 24, 25 years old, but oh, all the oh, way as, up. As, as a mentor. As a mentor. Okay. Oh, as a mentor. You're talking okay. about mentor. Yeah, I'm talking about both. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. But as a mentor, so you come down, we run the program, all you got to do is participate and spend time with your kid, and then you're, you know, if you feel a connection and a bond, and if you're inclined, you can then spend time with your, your mentee, your surf buddy, outside of program sessions. But oh, it's eight happens, Saturdays. Like big brothers and it sisters. It happens a lot. Thing, yeah. yeah, it happens a lot. In fact, Kekamapono is a boys' safe house. Uh, we had 15 boys from that program. It's a boys' safe house. So these are boys that have their status offenders. They've been in trouble, mostly running away. Um, some of them are running away from abuse at home. Some of them are running away from poverty. How old you know. are they? anywhere from 13 to 17. So we just finished an eight week program with them and then they invited us over for a thank you barbecue. And the boys were so excited. They cooked all the food for us and they cleaned the house. And, mm. and then afterwards we stayed and played games and it was a great day. I mean, it was really, really nice. How and do you organize a, a safe house for boys? I mean, do I have to be the owner of the house uh, or the renter of the house you know, or do you do it? That and, isn't, and that's one of our partners. So ah. partners in development. <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can check it out with them. Yeah. So we do a lot of partnering with other organizations. Yeah, and yeah. really our goal is to take, you know, there's lots of service organizations where people get paid to help the kids, yeah. right? But they're still living in this bad land world. And what we do is we try to connect them to people like you and me yeah. and show them that they do belong in our world. That's so right? important, you know. Yeah. I remember one time uh, my, my group, it was Think Tech, back, back yeah. 10 years ago, we approached the Department of Education of the mm -hmm. state. We said, we'd like to arrange a speaker's bureau because we want business guys, yep. you know, who are actually human beings when you get mm -hmm. to know them, uh, go out into the community and talk in the schools, mm -hmm. meet kids, you know, be mentors, mm -hmm. help them get jobs and understand what mm -hmm. it's like outside yeah. of their little world. Yeah. Make a big world for them. Totally. And they said, no, we don't have time for that. These kids have got to oh. perform all these services and obligations and standards and benchmarks. And we, you can't come into the schools. Don't, don't, don't even try. No. Don't even report to the principal's office. You know, nothing. Oh, my goodness. And I said, gee, that's really too bad. <clears throat> because I think that it's all about that kind of connection. It's all about connection. <clears throat> it's all about connection. It's so funny, right? So we talk about the worlds that they live in and, and shifting perspective. We had one kid when he first came to us. We were talking about work. And I said, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he goes, oh, I like be in the union. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, union. Which union? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Why'd you say union? Oh, well, my uncle is in the union. He has the best job in the family. So he doesn't know what kind of union, right? So eight weeks later, his mentor turned out was an engineer, right? So eight weeks later, hey, so what do you want to do when you grow up? Engineer. <laughs> See how they're impressionable. Yeah. And you can make a big difference. And, and the, the thing is, though, kid. I said to him, I said, why an engineer? Oh, my mentor's an engineer. And I go, so you think you can be an engineer? And he goes, well, he told me I can, and I believe him, you know. They're, they're, because part of what we do, too, is a lot of times we, don't, we tell the mentors, don't tell the kids what you do for a living, right? Because the kids show up at the beach, they're just like, oh, I'm going to learn how to surf. It's cool, but I'm scared. And you're, you're my mentor, right? I don't know anything about you. And I'm just like, he's a cool dude because he's taking time out to hang out with me, and he's going to keep me safe, and he's going to help me catch a wave. Yeah. And I don't know anything about you, so I can't block myself out because I think I don't belong, right? I'm already nervous, but you get in the water. You are there for me. I feel bonded to you. I catch this wave. It's the best feeling in the world. Now you're like my hero, right? Yeah. And we're getting along and we're laughing and we're playing. And then I find out, oh my God, Think Tech Hawaii, the guy's like this announcer, holy moly. I never would have thought I could hang out with you. Yeah, no, right. but you, you can. I can't. Thanks. <laughs> no, but, but you know, you think <clears throat> when you're 15, right? We, can we you have imagine to interrupt hanging out? that, though, because we have to take a break. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye for a minute <laughs> only. A minute. Cynthia DeRosier, founder and board member of Surfrider Spirit Sessions. You will learn much more about Surfrider Spirit Sessions in just one minute. We'll come back, because that's what we do. Aloha, this is Kelee Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute, and I want to thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. We are delighted to be partners with Think Tech because it gives us the opportunity to bring to you a show every week on Monday 
at 2 o'clock p.m. called Ehana Kako. Ehana Kako means let's work together because we believe that Hawaii will be a better place when everybody works together. And in what way? Well, at the Grassroot Institute, we research three basic areas and we invite guests to come on board from across the country, the state, and the nation to talk about a better economy, a better government, a better society. Now, aren't those things we all want? Indeed. If you'd like to have the latest research in terms of public policy, as well as ways in which we can build a better government economy and society, then tune in every Monday on Think Tech Hawaii at 2 o'clock p.m. for our fascinating guests on Ehana Kako. Let's work together. I'm Kaylee Aquino with the Grassroot Institute. And I'll see you then. Aloha. Bingo! I told you. We're back. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> it's Cynthia. Cynthia DeRosier, founder and board member of Surfrider Spirit Sessions. Well, let's distinguish, though. You know, Surfrider is the name of what? The team at Y9 High School? Right. But okay. that's not related to us. Not related Although to Although they're, they're still cool. Yeah, they're oh, cool. Yeah, they're oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. cool. And then <laughs> Surfrider is also the Surfriders. They do video. I think it's in Waianae High School. Yes. They do video of everything. Mm -hmm. They have a grant and they have lots of cameras and kids love this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it runs a parallel in a sense that there are people who understand the need to give kids a creative experience mm -hmm. or an experience that takes them out of their daily mm -hmm. life and shows them another, mm -hmm. another life. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is what it's all about. And if you had to sort of reduce all of that to its essence, it would be that a kid uh, in, a, in a troubled home, a home with no money, a home with too many people in the family, yeah. nobody, no, nobody has a job, all that kind of stuff, yeah. is very, it's a small life. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't have promise to it. Yeah. But if you add the mentor, mm -hmm. if you add the special <laughs> talent, the special experience yep. with, the, with, with nature, yep. all of a sudden you're taking that kid out of that little box and showing him the world. This is an invaluable experience for him. Absolutely. One of the kids, we have a quote, one of the kids told us the very first time we did this, she was so excited, she thought she was going to hate surfing, right? At the end, she was one of our biggest fans. And so the judge asked her, so why is it that you like it? And she said, you know, everybody's always telling me what I cannot do. Everybody's telling me no do this, no do that, no, 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 no. And then I come here, and then they show me what I can do. And they make it happy. Even when I didn't believe I could do it, they showed me how I could, and now I realize I can do more than I thought. Yeah. And that's really what it's about. It's about not only breaking the, the, the actual relationship barriers, right, giving them access to positive role models, it's about breaking their own mental barriers. Yeah. Because they run into so many challenges, after a while they give up on themselves. Yeah. It reminds me of Neil uh, Atabara, short story. Yeah. And it re relate, the, the, the magic word here is confidence, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes, absolutely. And I don't know whether it's Hawaii uh, as a special thing for kids, or maybe it's the whole country as a special thing for kids, but a lot of kids don't have confidence. Yeah. They don't believe in themselves. Yeah. So when he was, um, I guess, in high school, he applied. I guess they had to twist his arm. He had applied to the science fair, okay? And he lived in Hilo. <clears throat> he's right now, uh, he's an ophthalmologist and he's doing really, really well. And, um, and he's uh, been very um, active in the science fair organization we call the Hawaii Academy of Science. Anyway, so Neil um, wins at the science fair. Oh, wow. Now they send him to the mainland for further competition. And he wins there. And, and now he gets a scholarship to Harvard or Yale or MIT or something. And, and he does really well there. That's awesome. So this is all because somebody showed him mm -hmm. that he could do it, mm -hmm. that he could be confident, that he could be just like the other guys. Yes. And uh, he could, if, he, if it was science he wanted to learn, well, he could be yep. as good as any of them. Yep. Yep. It's the same thing here. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing. You know, we do a poll in the beginning, and it's funny because our reputation now has, you know, preceded us. When we first started doing this, and I kid you not, kids were angry. And, and every service they had was sort of paid for by somebody or something, and, and people's, it was people's jobs to fix them, right? And here we show up. So I had kids kind of look at me like, yeah, who are you working for? And they would ask us, how much are we getting paid? And, you know, we'd have to tell them it's volunteer. But <clears throat> we would do this to talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah, so we would do this volunteer thing, right? I mean, not volunteer. We would do a poll, and we would ask them, how many of you believe you're going to catch a wave and surf the first day? I would have kids arguing with me that they would fail. 
<laughs> no, not me. I'm not catching a wave. I could never do it. Yeah, yeah. so we make them a promise, and the promise said was that if you try, if you listen to the instructions in your mentor, and as long as it's not flat as a pancake out there, we guarantee you're going to catch a wave and ride it, right? And so they kind of look at me like, yeah, right, lady, we'll see. And so we would make sure it would happen. And at the end of that day, and, and they get so excited, right? They're so stoked. Oh my god, I caught a wave. So we said, you know, what else is it that you could do that we know you can do and you can achieve that maybe you don't believe, right? So we spend our whole time. That's like the first lesson we teach them, right? You are more and, more and better and more capable and have more abilities than you realize. You yeah. just got to try. And it applies to everything, not everything. just catching waves. Absolutely. So <laughs> surfing is really just the hook. It's the, it's the actual life lesson yeah. that re represents bigger life lessons. Yeah. Now, but you're, you're actually <clears throat> fighting upstream on this because that oh, same God, kid yeah. is going to go back home yep. to that same home where 19 people live in the house mm -hmm. and nobody works or whatever mm -hmm. the problems are. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, oh, we, it's not really happening. They're making believe on you. They're just yeah. pulling your chain and it's, uh, and 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 not going to necessarily encourage him. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you make him strong enough, you know, to yeah. to go upstream? Yeah, every kid is different, right? But usually, the thing is, it's like that wave. No one can take it away from you. You know you caught it's personal. it. Personal. You know that feeling. It's in you. Once that light turns on, you can't unsee what you saw. Yeah. Right? You can't, you, you know it. And the thing is, they keep coming back and they test us, right? Usually around sure. session kids, three. They're kids, they gotta four. test you. Yeah. It's their job yeah. to test you. Yeah. They'll start, they'll start <laughs> thinking, you know, like, and, and around what session three or four is when they start asking how much you guys are getting paid. And when they realize we're not getting paid, well, you know, that the, the, the mentors are, are coming just because they care about them, it changes everything. Yeah. It changes everything. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes uh, it changes, and for the parents too, because sometimes the parents, it's systemic, right? I was thinking that. Yeah. You know, they go home and the parent says, ah, this is all bull. Yep. And the kid says, no, it's not. Yeah. And you can learn from what's yeah. happening to me. Yep. You know, just watch what happens, you know? And actually, you know, I have to tell you, I, we haven't run into any hostile parents. Most of the parents are grateful. They see a shift in their kids. Some of the kids, not all the kids are delinquents, right? We have some kids that suffer from depression, like maybe they were bullied at school and so they were running away, or we have a lot of girls, unfortunately, who, who cut, um, who've attempted suicide. Cut. Yeah. I'll talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so, yeah. you know, we had one girl who ran away and the mom called us. This just happened a couple weeks ago. She showed up at session. She comes every Saturday and stays the whole day. Watching her daughter surf. No, the girl, <coughs> the me. girl ran away from home but comes to us and so we've been advising her why she runs right? away to you she was running away comes to us and then we've eventually gotten her to look at her situation differently and work things out at home and go back home right so that's great yeah yeah so how did you get into this i mean <laughs> <coughs> this is a long way from an ordinary life you know uh, yeah um you know I believe that Hawaii has a spirit and has a mana, and sometimes you're given assignments and you just have to do it. So the long, the short version of the long story is um, I was born and raised here, always wanted to surf, never did, because back then the boys were like, get out of the water, you kook. Uh. So I focused on paddling and um, body surfing and, and whatnot. And came back home from the mainland one day and said, you know what, I'm going to learn how to surf. And so at like 30-something, I paddled out, caught my first wave, the whole world changed. Um, I had a dream, and it was this book, which I published, and all of the money was donated, the profits were donated to Surfrider Foundation. At the same time, I met some girls from Girls Court, and the counselor recognized me and said, will you teach them how to do a book? And long story short, we took the money from the book, we used the lessons in the book, and we made up this program. And it was myself, the judge, two probation officers, judge? the counselor, uh, Judge Karen Radius. So she's the founder of Girls Court. She's since retired, and she's the chair of our board. That's yeah. great. And then eventually the boys found out about it. And how this is great. First time ever, girls program, boys want in. Right? <laughs> so we're hearing from juvenile drug court, the boys want to surf with your program. And yeah, so it just kind of you know, blew up from there. Yeah. It's been almost 10 years. 2016 yeah. will be 10 you're years. You're a volunteer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the how first. Do you, how do you live? Well, the first, the first year and a half, it was all volunteer, and then um, 
we had people coming up offering us money, and, and the Omidyars actually helped us get started oh, to nice become. Of them. A, yeah, yeah, it was. Inc you know what? If it weren't for Pam, I wouldn't have done it, and and God bless her for for that. So um, we're able to become a real organization, make real programs, solidify, learn, get measurements, all of that in place. Board of directors. Yeah, board of directors. <laughs> I now volunteer. So I've stepped out three years ago. I moved up to the board, and I volunteer and I train our new people. So there's still funding required yeah. um, for the base oh, operations, sure. for but the other development. People, yeah. yeah, but the development's been paid for already. You know, yeah, yeah. we're always trying to improve, but the core program is 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 set. You have a you have a premises, a venue. I'm sorry? Our An private? office? Oh, actually, yes. Our offices are in the old juvenile <laughs> detention home. Oh, cool. Right? There's a symbolism there. Totally. There. Yeah. All about transforming, right? We take the detention home. We've made them offices. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. take kids who believe they're nobody, and we help them see they're somebody. Absolutely. You're, almost, you're making fun of the serious <laughs> part. A short story. When I was in the service, we were stationed at Governor's Island, <clears throat> and Governor's Island was active in the War of 1812, and there was this a fort on one corner of Governor's Island, and since the fort of, of 1812, you know, it went downhill, so they used it as an army prison. Oh. It was the toughest, roughest, darkest, deepest dungeon prison, yeah. you know, and when the Coast Guard took over, which was in, the, um, I guess, in the 60s, mm. uh, it made the prison into a, um, a nursery school. <laughs> <laughs> it painted all these colors, you nice. know. The deepest, darkest, dungiest place in the, in yeah, the yeah. island was all of a sudden the brightest, happiest place. <laughs> See, but I love that metaphor, right? I love that you take something dark and you make it light. I like that. And, and that's the, the reality is our kids, what I love about them is they have a real spark. They have a strength. I mean, they are resilient. They have been through stuff that you and I would never encounter in our lifetime and they've survived right so we tell them don't focus on the pain you've been through but look at the fact that you've survived now how do we turn this around how do we take that strength that you've built and that experience that you've gone through and learn from it and make a better life we're right? going to talk about that right after this break we're going to talk about what kind of better life they can they can aspire to okay and, and what happens there and what happens when it doesn't work? I need to know that oh, from you, Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, Cynthia DeRosier, founder and board member and volunteer for Surf Rider Spirit Sessions. I'm so excited to talk to you. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Aloha. This is Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii. We talk about positive stories, positive stories of businesses in Hawaii, how they have been successful, and how they have overcome some of the opportunities obstacles that a lot of us encounter when we try to have a business here. And believe it or not, there are a number of positive stories here, and we want to talk to all of you. So we broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock, uh, and it rebroadcasts again on Olelo Channel 54. So I sure hope to see you next time. Please tune in on Thursdays at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Hello, ha! How you doing? It's me, Angus McTech. Wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy, every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Bingo. Bingo. Because, <laughs> because that's why bingo. Uh, this is, of course, uh, it's Aloha United We Stand. And we love Cindy Adams and jo Jody Sharuma, who make this possible for us <laughs> and sending us guests all the time, like Cynthia, and that's, it makes us happy. We are very happy Thursdays, 12 to 1, doing this with you. Oh, okay? my God. Thank you guys so much for doing this. I mean, yeah. what, what great work you guys are doing. And Aloha United Way, thank you. Yeah. Well, we want to find out what's going on in the corners of, the, of our society mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We want to find out how people are doing out there. Because mm -hmm. you know, the reality is there are many communities here. Not all of them talk to each other. Mm -hmm. We want them to talk to each other. We want everybody to come together. That's the thing. And, right. and we want Mahayana. You know Mahayana? No. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Buddhist word. And it means seeking the greater good. Um, that's, that's what we're about. Seeking wonderful. The greater good, yeah. Yeah. So we want to know you. So, okay, so how far can you go with this program? So I'm a teenager, yeah. and I come into the program, I learn how to surf, yeah. I learn about my body, yeah. uh, which I probably didn't have a clue about before, yeah. 
I learned about having success. Yes. Any kind of success. Yes. I've had success surfing. Yeah. And I learned about nature. Yeah. I learned about the outdoors. I learned to love this place yes. more than I ever could before. Yes. I learned to I learned to meet people, people I don't know. Yes. Uh, even people who are of other races yeah. who I don't know and now yeah. I can connect with yeah. who give me yeah. friendship and yes. value and they yes. touch me. Yes. How far can I go with that? As far as they want. It's up to them. How far can you go with any good relationship or with any good skill set, right? So we, we don't solve all the problems and we don't do everything, but our job is to connect them to a network and then show them how they can leverage that. But it's really up to them. So high notes, you know, we have kids who have gotten jobs either with the help of our staff or with the help of their mentor showing them how to apply. We actually right now have a mentor who's just hired one of the kids. I love that. Yeah. That's great. That yeah. means he really yeah. means it. Yeah. Or she is the case. No, maybe. all of our mentors, our mentors are incredible, amazing people. It's the minute somebody walks in our door and says they want to be a mentor and they go through the whole process, at the end of it, I'm like, you're, you're somebody I can be friends with for life. So footnote to that, mm. what's the dynamic for the mentors? In other words, from the time they walk into the door uh -huh. and are visible yeah. As, yeah. as amazing, incredible people yeah. to the time, you know, that... Yeah. They stop or they go to the next level, wherever it may be. What, what happens to them? What changes do you see in them? Ooh. You know, I think for the mentors, it's, they start off saying, you know, I kind of want to help and I surf and this would be kind of a good way to do two things at once. But I think at the end, their eyes really open up because when you see how other people grow up, I think there's a sense of gratitude for what they have, but also a sense of empowerment that they can contribute to the world in an even more meaningful way, just by being themselves, right? Just with the skill set that they have. It's amazing what happens when you can just see someone and listen to someone, and that person's life can change because they feel seen and heard. Mahayana. Right? Yeah, and you don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be a doctor. We have yoga instructors. We have students. We have, we have mentors who are in college, and that's good enough for our kids. They just want somebody stable that they can count on, right? Yeah, what a great way to, if you're a mentor, what a great way to spend a Saturday. Oh, so much fun. It's and then you meet other really cool people. It's that you're uh, yeah. doing much more than that. Yeah. And you're not doing it alone. We're doing it in a group, right? Oh, so there's oh, like the, a really... The whole experience is a group. Yeah. Well, tell me about how the group works. I want to know about the dynamics so, of so the group. So maximum we have is 15 kids. We've actually gone to 17 and then it turns into a zoo. So 15 kids, <laughs> 15 mentors, and then our staff. So you're looking at 35, 40 people on the beach. They, they call us the Smurfs. <laughs> Well, they we all have blue rash guards, the Smurfs. <laughs> Some people call us the, the blue bombs, whatever. But we, we got on to Waikiki. Is that why you're wearing Yeah! Blue. I know, I know. <laughs> Actually, I didn't plan it, but yes, that, that'll work. Yeah. So we're down in Waikiki in canoes, which is a beginner spot. And, and, you know, thank you so much to all of the instructors because they know us. And a lot of these guys were where these kids were. So they're really helpful. They all kind of pitch in and help us out. And, you know, we have a great time. But we don't just surf. They do journaling. We do some life lessons. We teach Hawaiian culture. And then at the end of every surf session, just four hours, the kids, Malama Aina, they do a beach cleanup. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And, very you know, in the nice. beginning, they're like, okay, do a beach cleanup. By the end, they it's They realize like, it's see. connected. It's yeah. connected. Yeah. 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 You know, the ocean gave something to us. Now we got to give back, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's protect yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Lovely. Lovely. And, and it's phenomenal because one of the things that we do is we have them pick up cigarette butts, right? And we teach them how the cigarette butts, I call them little death bombs, because the, the turtles and the fish eat them. And turtles will die if they eat too many of them. It takes between 10 and 20. So it becomes a goal for the kids, how many turtles could be potentially save saved, yeah, right? Yeah. So at the end of session, we've had as many as 10,000 cigarette butts collected at the end of eight weeks, which is a five minute beach cleanup, 10,000. And you know, smoking's illegal on the beach, so I don't know what's going on down there. But the idea that there were 10,000 little negative acts and our kids undid that negative act. And it is unlikely those kids are going to smoke themselves. You know what? A lot of them start off smoking and by the end, after all the <laughs> cigarette butts, they're like, no. Really? Yeah. What an awful, yeah. <laughs> that gritty feeling uh, when you touch a cigarette yeah. butt. And we yeah. teach them what's in it. Like, we show them all the chemicals, and yeah. We, we, yeah, I mean, they're, at the end, yeah, auntie, yeah. I don't want to do that. So when do they graduate, so to speak? Man, where does it come to an end? Yeah, we don't have an official graduation. We do have eight weeks, so it's eight consecutive weeks, because um, we found that that's about the ideal time that the mentors can contribute, that also the, the get, provide some bonding for the kids. After that, it's really up to them. 
The kids have access to all of the mentors. They can call whoever they want. They can call us. For life. Yeah. And then we can call them. A lot of them are Facebooking now. So they can maintain those connections just as much as the mentors can maintain connections. A lot of times you can see right off the bat, it, it's sort of like matchmaking, right? Yeah. You're like, oh my God, those two, they're bonded. And in fact, we have one mentor who was with us probably about seven or eight years ago. She moved to the mainland. Her kid wound up going to college in the same town. And so they still see each other for lunch once a month. And they get together, and she's now, you know, in her 20s. And oh, so that's, that's like a bond, like that's her auntie, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So it's up to the kids. We also have a, um, a junior mentor program. So there are some kids that we see have leadership qualities. So we hire them, and they become part of our staff, and they help us run programs. Oh, cool. How big yeah. is your staff? <laughs> Small? <Really? laughs> there's about four people on staff. Actually, yeah, there's four people on staff, and then the rest is all volunteer. But this is and very then the labor mentors. intensive. You've got to organize it. Yeah. You've got to keep track of all the people. Yep. Uh, you've got to make sure everything works like a clock. Yep. You know, I can tell you from here. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So it's, it, it must be intensive for you to make sure it it's is. being managed. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of management that's invisible. Right? Because what we do is we're getting information and referral from the courts, then we're going out and finding the mentors, and then we're working with the kids. And a lot of times the kids will tell us something, and then we've got to try and coordinate what's the best way to support them, yeah. you know, that doesn't overstep any bounds, and, yeah. and that also isn't, you know, somehow denigrating anybody or whatever. But um, I don't know what I just meant by that, but. <laughs> I don't know why. But, you know, there's, Everybody... there's a lot of, like, it's, it's sort of like. Um, God, it's like Yenta times 20. You know, you're doing a lot of matchmaking and facilitating did, relationships. Did you say Yenta? I did say Yenta because you were Yenta. in New York. Stop <laughs> just for one minute. <laughs> now you see, Cynthia spent some time in New York. Yeah. <clears throat> in New York, Yenta is a, <laughs> what is it? it's a, it's a term of art. <laughs> That's right. It's sort of like a very involved grandmother. Yeah, and so. it's, it's very ethnic. <laughs> It's just sort of general ethnic, not any particular ethnic. Yeah. I guess it was Yiddish years ago, but now it's everyone. <laughs> you know, Puerto Rican yenta is everywhere in New York. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what happens if it doesn't work? I mean, what's, what's the uh, scenario Ooh. like that? You know, that's really hard. Um, I, I've, the judges have, have often reassured us, as well as the counselors and the, and the probation officers, that these kids are really struggling. So we... On the very, very worst case, we did have a kid who committed suicide after our program ended, and he was struggling a lot. The thing is, he was calling his mentor all the time, and, and the mom, you know, I, was, I felt like we had failed. But the mother actually still maintains relationship with us, and, and she told us, she said, you know, if during that time that he was, since the time he, he, he was with you, it actually, I, she believed, extended his life and that it improved the quality of his life so that it gave him more to live for. He was suffering with, with chemical issues that, yeah. Well, no, just issues that he had imbalances so that he was suffering from depression. Oh. Um, you know, so that's, that's the worst case. And so we didn't cause damage. The number one rule for us is like a doctor, right? Cause, cause no harm. We want to make sure that we don't cause damage and then yeah. we do everything we can to, to make improvements. What happened with that kid is rare. I mean, we're talking one out of, you know, I don't know, I think we're up to 450 that we've served so far. So. You ever have kids that you have to throw out of the program? Yep. Why? Because if they're going to be disruptive and if they're not going to participate and if they're not going to give it a chance, then, then we'll stick with them for a long, long time. We'll do everything we can. But sometimes they're just not ready and sometimes they just are so fearful they don't want to trust. Um, so we'll say, you know what, don't come, but you can call me, or sometimes I'll take them out, or one of our staff members will take them one-on-one -on -one to see if we can build that trust. It's sort of like, you know, if there's a dog that's been beaten too much, this dog is just going to snap in, in instinctively, right? Yeah, so yeah, how do we coax them, and how do we get them to understand that really we just want to help them because yeah. we believe in them? Yeah, you've yeah. got to show them that at some point. And I'll tell you, uh, of the kids that we've dismissed, every single one has come back within six months and oh, really? come to me and said, Auntie, I'm sorry, can I, can I come in? And you've let them in. We let them in. Oh, that's nice. We okay. let them in, yeah. So uh, w w did you study social work in New York? No. <laughs> what, what makes you like this, actually, Cynthia? This, not everybody is like this. Yeah. May I offer that thought? Um, I think growing up in Hawaii, 
You know, I grew up, we didn't lock our doors, and all my neighbors were my aunties and my uncles. And all of us got scoldings if we messed up by anybody, and we were all cousins. I think that's, I think that's the core of it. I think the other part of it is my background is in art. So I've learned to see the world differently, and I've also learned to, to be empathetic, right? To, oh, what would, the, what would the world look like if I lived in that person's environment with that, growing, with that way of growing up? Yeah. And so having that flexibility, I think, I don't know. I, like I said, I think it just was something that was meant to be. I never met a social worker or an artist that I didn't like, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, and they, there is a there is a connection. Yeah. There really is. Yeah. So the next and last question is: uh, So, how long are you going to be doing this? You know, you're what 21, 22. Oh now. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and times I, two. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait. Times two and a half. I don't know. I'm bad with math, art. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my way of asking very indirect yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how long are you going to do this? I will do it as long as I can, and if I can't. I'll find somebody else to do it, and I'll train them. Yeah. Because as long as there's kids out there who, who need to be stoked, you know, who, whose fires are being dimmed, we will do everything we can to help them. And I'll bet you something else, too. If you're there or if your, your mentee is there doing it, it's a program that will remain relevant and valid yep. and, and useful in our, in our community. You know, and, and the thing, too, I, I want to... We always say we're going to help them. The reality is we're all helping each other. Right? Because if they do good, we all do good. Sure. Right? The cost to society if we don't help these kids is astronomical. Yeah. It's, it's huge. You've got to go see uh, Cynthia's website. It's very good. Let me, let me, I, I printed part of it out. Let's see. Surferspirit.org. Okay. Surferspirit.org. And it's, it's a very good website and it describes <laughs> a lot of the things she's been talking about. And I was very impressed to look at it. I am even more impressed to talk to her. Oh, That's thank Cin you. Cynthia. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> Cynthia. Cynthia DeRosier, founder and board member of Surfrider Spirit Sessions. Thanks for appearing on Think Tech. Oh, <laughs> mahalo. Thank you for everything. Mm. <laughs>